The eyes, thank you, this way is like it. Thank you. Thank you, the Honorable Joyce Vagalantwatwa. You did not tell your friends that now you've been the Committee of Governor Assurance, where I should be inviting them to, to also join you. Good morning, everyone. I would like to welcome you to this official handover ceremony. The official Dome of Parliament was handled yesterday in the plenary, and therefore this is symbolic for us as the opposition. I'd like to welcome my successor in office, the Right Honorable Joel Senyonyi Besekezi, this morning taking over the Lopez docket officially. You're welcome, sir, and congratulations. In the same breath, I would like to congratulate most sincerely all of us here where given different appointments, we have people crossing over from one dog to another. But before that, I'd like to appreciate everyone that has journeyed with us over the last two and a half years. I have uh, worked with you, the media, uh, for this great detail, in and outside the parliament, in the field, in the trenches. You've been immense. I want to thank you most sincerely for the cooperation. I, want, I would like to disagree with the Honorable Joyce when he say, says that uh, she wants you to treat the Honorable Joel the way you treated me. Now, I invite you to treat him even much better than he have done. You know, it shouldn't be the same. Uh, it can be better. You know, it's been a learning and unlearning process between us. And um, I'm very sure we have learned a lot from each other. As the eyes of the public, you have done your best to ensure that what we do reaches the public and it attracts public scrutiny. I want to thank you most sincerely. I would like to thank the team I've worked with in the cabinet. You know, for us here, it's been work, work and work. It's been intense. And people have been there. I want to thank my team. I want to thank um, the chief whip in absentia for his ever presence in our work. We have um, worked together for this time and been able to, to give the public what we thought we could do in the circumstances. I'm very sure some of you have covered parliament for more than 10 years. You've not seen this happen. I've been here for 13 years. I've not seen this happen. We shall not go into the whys. But we are doing it. And I think it's a day all of us should really uh, be celebrating that the opposition is able to transition and there will be no drama. I have a sense that people did expect drama here. We're not dramatic. We are serious about what we do. And we are going to continue doing it seriously and even more seriously. I am very happy that with my team, We've been able to lay the foundation. Uh, the Honorable Joel Senyonyi is not beginning from uh, nowhere, but somewhere. I'd like to ask of you to take on this mantle with the zeal and the capabilities I'm sure you, 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 you bear. It is doable. It's not impossible. The team here has been reshuffled. You have new members and old members. But I will tell you that I know all my members, including those outside the cabinet. Take use of the party whips, because this platform is a six-party platform. I want to thank the party whips that have worked with us over the last two and a half years for whipping their members. 
Because being in the opposition is a choice. But a choice many find difficult to bear. And therefore, sometimes you go to have some of your members stagger. Please focus on those who remain. Otherwise, um, these are adults. Sometimes they're going to make very unpleasant choices. But you are, you are their leader. You have to lead them. You have three categories of uh, members here. You have workers. You have talkers and observers. It's up to you to find the best out of the workers. The workers need to be motivated to continue working. The tendency of the talkers is to appear to know what they don't know, but they do not do it. The observers are timid to do anything for fear of making mistakes. Encourage them to make mistakes, because if you don't want to make a mistake, then do nothing. The mistakes we have made here is because we've been trying to do something and not personal, but for the good of the duty to which we were called. So please, of those three, maybe we even find a fourth category, but at least I've observed the three. <laughs> find a way of, uh, uh, of working all those categories, as you'll discover further. They are very talented people here, extremely talented people. Give them a chance to work, delegate them where possible, I'm very sure they will deliver. I want to thank the technical team we've worked with from day one. Um, Jackie is the senior here. Peter Busiku in absentia. Um, for your information, right honorable, Rob, the team leader in our department was voted employee over the year in parliament, meaning that um, We've been doing something here which everybody recognized. Uh, therefore, you have a very potent team here to work with. Um, they're very zealous of working. Um, but most importantly, even when you face challenges like they'll happen, at the back of your mind, don't forget the fact that uh, one, we have a young party to build. Two, we have a nation to save from going to the abyss. And therefore, that should keep you steady even when you face challenges. The challenges you'll face are not insurmountable. You'll be able to find a way around them because I trust you have the capability to overcome some of these challenges, including uh, so many man-made challenges that are going to find. I want to encourage you to work with the media. The media is now more proliferated Whoever has uh, a phone with a camera is a media person. But the people here are more structured. I want to encourage you to work with them. Not be diverted by the alternative media without an editor. Uh, you can't track who they are, but they're everywhere. Be alive to the destructions from within, including from people who are supposed to back you up. You, know, you need to have the strength to work with the people who are supposed to back you up, but instead choose to backstab you. Be strong. There's a job to do for the party, for the country, for history. I know you'll be capable of doing that. I want to wish you the best. And uh, most importantly, thank everyone here who we've worked with. I want to assure you we are still around. Do the job we are set to do. We're still doing it. And... Um, You'll see us working, no doubt about that. Thank you so much. May God bless you and protect you. Wish you the best in your service. Over to my country. Sebo, toku vien nyoku vikabi diye visatu. Um... I want to thank you, um, sir, the Right Honorable Mathias Mpuga, and uh, the rest of the team. Once again, to thank you for your service and you steering us through the time that uh, you have steered us, and the team, the very able team that uh, you have been working with. You have laid a good foundation upon which we shall build together continuously 
to see that uh, the work that ought to be done gets to be done. I want to appreciate um, the shadow cabinet that's been working with the right Honorable Mpuga for your dedication. Uh, every so often I would come for some of the meetings whenever I wasn't busy with Kosase, and I could see a lot of work going on. So I want to appreciate the entire team, and as he has appreciated the technical team as well, they, they do the technical backstopping, they do the heavy lifting, and uh, we want to appreciate you. My hope is that we shall continuously work together very well. Uh, I saw the Honorable Helen Nachimuli coming in. You're welcome. She's our incoming uh, Minister for Information and Anti-Corruption. Akagambako, Joyce Bagal, I had the way she would say it. While everybody would say anti-corruption, she would say anti-corruption. Akagambakale. <laughs> It should make the office really very powerful and serious. So <laughs> she's walking in on crutches, not too well, but I welcome her. I believe she will be very ably along the way, be doing an incredible job. I, I want to welcome the team that um, we're going to be working with. Most of them have been a part of the team. Um, others might not necessarily be on the shadow cabinet, but... Um, they are leaders, members of parliament in the opposition. I, I've been trying to understand, I was having a chat with uh, the right Honorable Mpuga, and I was saying there seems to be a lot of excitement about this particular change of leadership, this particular transition. And really it dawned on me that uh, the excitement is because Ugandans rarely see a peaceful change of God. Rarely does it happen. You know, normally there's pulling of ropes here and there, and then there's places where it has not even happened at all. And, and so that's why maybe there's a bit of excitement. So it should be a good thing that um, we are sending a signal that it is possible. It's possible that leadership can change and stability continues to prevail. Uh, we hope that some people will pick a leaf and others the whole tree. To my colleagues, um, the people of Uganda have a lot of hope in us. I see that in the way they pay attention to the work that we do. I see that in the way they critique us because they, they don't expect us to goof up. You know, maybe there are people who, when they goof up, it's okay, but for us, they hold us to a higher standard. Uh, and so I want to encourage colleagues, please don't take offense when people hold us by a very high standard and put a lot of focus on the work that we do, criticizing us every so often. For me, that's a vote of confidence. And so it should encourage you, colleagues, as opposed to you feeling denigrated and downtrodden. No, that should encourage you. That means that people have a lot of hope in us. They expect better from us. And I want to appeal to us, let's do exactly that. Let's, let's show them the way. Let's be their voice. Ugandans grapple with one challenge too many. They are out there with issues that are of concern to them. They hear of the corruption. You know, they hear of the public debt that has gone through the roof and continues to grow. And yet with this growing public debt, they don't see how it's reflected in service delivery. They see the poor roads on which they drive. They see the state of health care. They see the state of education. The young people who some have gone to school and they're out there jobless, they, they don't have opportunities working for them. Business people whose businesses are crumbling. Why? Because the, the cost of production is too high. Everything is problematic. These Ugandans are looking to you and I to be their voice, to offer leadership. They know there is a government somewhere, but they know that that government does not care so much for them. That's why they behave the way they do. And so they look to you. And um, my hope is that we shall not let those people down, that we shall speak out for them, that we shall put emphasis on the issues that concern them. Some of them I have raised. We have been through and continue uh, with the issue of human rights violations. Ugandans want justice. And they're counting on you and I to be their voice for that justice. People lost their loved ones through the election period. Many others are in jail. 
the Olivia Lutayas of this world, uh, the Machetes, Rashid Segu, Jasanya, several others. Those are just but a few. Some up to four years, and their cases have not kicked off at all. And they're looking to you and I to be their voice. There are Ugandans that were disappeared. They were picked up by the regime, and nobody knows their whereabouts for four plus years. Their families are continuously in groaning, but they do have hope when they see us pay attention to these issues, when we continue to put emphasis on these matters. My hope is that um, we shall only engage a higher gear in these issues for the sake of the people that we represent. Thank you. Um, I want to welcome the Chief Opposition Whip, the Honorable John Baptist Nambeshe, Italani, Yabama Saba. That means the lion of uh, the Yabama Saba people. Now, Omumbeja, uh, maybe I'll respond firstly in English and do Luganda. Issues of concern. I did um, hint on this, and um, I will re say what I said earlier on. The, the issues that we have been focused on that are important are not going to stop. If anything, we just want to engage a higher gear. By the time we broke off, we were following up on the issue of missing persons. And at that time, there was a meeting between the speaker, uh, the Right Honorable Matthias Mpuga, and Madam Maria Mwangada, Wangadia, the Human Rights Commission chairperson. Unfortunately, she came alone for the meeting, and she was told, look, you are not the commission. You're simply its chairperson. We wanted to show up with the entire commission. Parliament had resolved that there gets to be a thorough inquiry into the question of missing persons. And uh, we are going to raise that reminder to Parliament because it's a resolution that was passed to say that that inquiry should happen and should happen soon. Because, you see, if this issue of missing persons is left the way it is, that means government will take it that this is a tactic we can deploy. And they will do it again. So we want that it becomes very risky for them to try this tactic again on people who are opposed to the regime. And that's why we are going to insist and get to the bottom of this issue. Because while, yes, we'll be handling all these other issues, now we are dealing with the budget framework paper and so on, and all those are important aspects to handle, life is even more important. Because who are you budgeting for if the people you are budgeting for doing all these different things are killed, they are missing, and, and so on and so forth. So if anything, we're simply going to engage a higher gear. You also raised the question of, um, yes, um, how shall we make sure that uh, our members return? I'll tell you what. Our concern is not just us returning to the positions we occupy. We want to take government. Yes. We want to take government um, and want to continuously sample Ugandans and show them that we have got what it takes to lead this country. Some in the past were in doubt. Slowly but surely, they begin to realize that these people have got what it takes. And we'll continue to show that. That, look, we are a credible alternative and we have got what it takes. So besides just us retaining our seats, we want to take government. We don't want to be in opposition forever. Ali asked about Madame Wangadia, saying uh, the question of missing persons is a hoax. I, I'm hoping one of these days I'll be in a meeting where Madame Maria Wangadia is. I want to first understand this person properly. You know, sometimes we judge people before we fully understand them, yeah? And to have an opportunity to fully understand her as a person, her challenges, her idiosyncrasies as an individual, Things, things, things about her generally, because today she says this, tomorrow she says another thing, issues that are not coordinated. So I, I, I don't know. I don't know what the problem is with her, but I'm hoping I'll have an opportunity soon to have an understanding of her. Not long ago, she actually said that um, she even fears to sit in her own meetings, commission meetings, because while she is there, some of her commissioners are carrying guns, and so she, she lives in fear. So I don't know whether this living in fear is what destabilizes her as an individual. She might be going through a lot of trauma, 
So when you're traumatized, you say many uncoordinated things. Because she's the one who said that, that some of the commission meetings, some commissioners are holding guns. So this is a traumatized lady, you know, and, and maybe she, she needs to inform her appointing authority, I, I need to go somewhere to be rehabilitated. I don't know. Yeah, but uh, hopefully I'll get to understand her. Because, again, even in the report that they outed, they did concede that some people are missing. Okay, others on whom they didn't concede, it's because they've not taken trouble to dig deeper. Now, the same person says that today. Another time she's saying, ah, these things are hoax and so on. Hopefully we'll understand the woman fully. Uh, Ali Mivule also asked about the Honorable Zake's position. You see, no, not everything will be in the law books. For our own ease of doing work, there are responsibilities that we create. And so the office of the deputy chief opposition whip, by the way, has not just started. It was there even in the last parliament. It's not within the rules, but it was created to ease work, uh, to lessen the load on the chief opposition whip, for work to continue happening. It was an internal creation. Uh, it was an internal creation by the opposition, and it is something we found fit to carry on, and we'll carry on with that responsibility. So yes, it might not be known within the structures of parliament, that's okay. But we created the responsibility, and the same way we might create a few other responsibilities to say, so and so, help us with this situation, uh, so that work gets to move. So that's the idea. It might not, yes, be one of those prescribed within the rules and so on, but it was created by our predecessors, and we found it important to keep that position, and uh, we believe that the Honorable Zake will help us with that responsibility. Topista asked um, MPs who are unstable and, and so on. Look, I'm not going to be carrying a thermometer or a stabometer every day to establish, you know, so now today, where is your temperature? Is it still in red, blue, green, or has it gone to yellow? I don't know what. These are leaders, they're others. Uh, we keep saying we shall know people by, by their actions, by their fruits. What's important is that we keep doing the work that we ought to do. Look. Not everybody will stay the course. Uh, again, it's important to, to have that at the back of our minds, yeah? I am lead of opposition now, but you see there have been leaders in the past and they were grappling with similar challenges and even outside in their parties. A number of the ministers serving in cabinet today were opposition fellows. They crossed. Did the world come to an end? Because you see, when you cross, the issues of concern to Ugandans don't go away. You know, when you cross over, Ugandans continue grappling with the challenges that they grapple with. So, by the way, even if Ugandans wake up and all of us leaders on this side have crossed over, new leadership will emerge because the issues that are of concern to Ugandans are still in place. Ronald uh, talked about Western Uganda coverage of opposition activities. We are glad you're here. Hopefully, you'll keep pushing through our voice there. Um, that, that, that's a challenge uh, that uh, a number of districts in this country are cut out deliberately or otherwise, but we hope we can keep penetrating those different places. Um, the Right Honorable Puga and team were moving to many parts of the country, and people were beginning to see, wait a minute, is this actually, in, is this a part of Uganda? Because it did not seem like it was a part of Uganda, and yet it was. So continuously we'll keep doing this so that all these issues come to the fore. Lastly, there was a question, um, I think you are saying diplomacy versus activism. Look, in my toolbox, I have got many tools. And I'll be deploying those various tools as and when the need arises. There is a time to sit and ask questions and uh, engage. And we shall engage where when that opportunity does arise. I mean, when we are in plenary, we are engaging. Yes, sometimes our voices will shoot up and so on, but we are engaging, asking questions, asking and demanding for accountability and so on. Uh, so there's a place for that. There's a place to ask calmly. There's a place to raise your voice when the demands you're making are taken lightly. You saw the Honorable Mpuga raise his voice at some point. 
you know, when government was saying, look, this question of missing persons, we have responded to it, we have no further response. He said, but wait a minute. The people are still missing. What do you mean you have no further response? So there's a time for everything. There's a place to, to, be, a bit, to be a bit calm and look Nabanja in the face and say, can you give us Chivarama? And um, after a while, that voice will be a lot higher because we are not going to stop making the demands that are important.